Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM23 Lions. It's episode 132 after finishing La Vuelta last time. In order to get the rankings to update, it used to be always instantaneous, but this year when they changed the ranking structure, it now updates on a weekly basis. So, the race ended. To get the ranking points, I had to proceed forward a week. There wasn't another race to interfere, so I was able to easily do that. I did show you those rankings, but you may have noticed I had the face cam in a peculiar place. It was not in a normal position, and that's because at the same time that I had proceeded that week to get the update on rankings, something astonishing happened, and I wasn't ready to reveal it to you just yet. I am ready to reveal that now, and that's Johannes Hanok. A couple episodes back, I mentioned I wasn't going to cheese the game. We were going to take it as it comes, and I was hopeful. I was hopeful because we were massively overdue for a level up. Massively overdue. I, I went through the statistics regarding it, and we've only had two level ups all year. And they were in January of 2030 and February of 2030. Level ups at the top end. Level ups of the four and a half star variety or above. Well... Johannes Henoek, one of our four and a half star guys who last leveled up in July of 29. So not quite a year and a half ago, year and a quarter ago, leveled up and joined the four and a half star club. This year, his calendar has been mostly World Tour races. He, he's had seven of them, including back-to-back -back Grand Tours. Now, in terms of performance... In eight, that Perry Nice has been his biggest race of the year, but to date he does not have a single victory to his name. But he's been to three monuments, and now he's been to two Grand Tours, and with that back to back, he's picked up enough of an experience boost to push him to the next level. And not only has he leveled up within that four and a half star realm, he's pushed into becoming our third five-star rider. So Johannes Henoke is now a five-star rider with a 77 mountain, a 78 medium mountain. He's got a little bit left in that department. He's got a lot left as a puncher, a little bit left as a sprinter, but a 71 flat, 81 stamina. Best we've had on the team by a wide margin, 77 recovery. Does make him good over a long race. Uh, like a Grand Tour, so he's great as a support rider for that, but with just a 77 Mountain, he's not a leader. He's just a really good support climber. With a 78 Acceleration, the capability, the potential to be a good puncher is certainly there if we were to focus and develop that. The 62 Sprint itself is not, but the 69 Hills is most definitely not. Not at this point, but there, like I said, is plenty of room in that department but if it's going to take him a year and a quarter already to level up it's going to take longer the next time especially with the calendar he had this year i can't see that doing much more uh, to help or boost so we'd be looking you know a good year and a half from now before he sees another level up and with those ratings it would take probably three level ups of focus focusing him as a puncher before he would ever be effective in that meaning we're, we're probably talking about five years down the road before Hanok would be an elite puncher but he's got good stamina acceleration downhill and uh, good mountain slash medium mountain ratings that do absolutely make him a strong support climber and in joining the five-star club he is just our third rider in that department and he's actually leveled up far enough that he's rated above Mason Samuels. He's now our second best rider. Clearly nothing compared to what Arab offers us. And the strength of that top trio all being mountain guys definitely plays into where we're at as a team. But being that, you know, our highest rating is still under 80 for a mountain. Uh, it's not translating into much more than just a top 10 for GC, as we've seen. 
But, you know, if we had all three of them at, say, the Jiro, and the strongest climbers around him, maybe, just maybe, we could crack the top five. But we're nowhere near winner level at, at this point. Nowhere near. But we are getting stronger. And with that perfectly timed level up, just a couple weeks or three weeks before the end of the market, oh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, let's look at the rankings now. So La Gruppetto is the top one. And the first Continental Pro team is Geico getting back in. So uh, that's finally for them. It's been quite a few years they've been down in Continental Pro now. MTK also uh, looking to move up. The first one out is Trofout, which uh, have not been there for long, and I I think they were up one year, and they're going to rubber band back down this year, if I'm getting that correct, if I remember that correct. But there are changes here. I mean, there are Continental teams, Austria Car, Placard, Bell, that are making the jump to Continental Pro, and that's because this thing is so, so tight. I mean, a solid four star stars without a sliver is Movie Star in 23rd. There's a sliver or above for these others, if you can't see that closely enough. But it's still a solid four, four stars all the way down here. And there, we are almost to solid four stars. Uh, solid four stars, I believe, is Ratsa to Movie Star. Visually, that's what it looks like to me. We are in the, it couldn't be any closer, it's definitely above 3.9 range. And where we were in 37th a little while ago was like 3.8. I mean, we're talking about the smallest of increases, but it moved us up four spots. It bounced the bubble. Let's check in what's still out there. Last we saw, there was still one five-star rider and a number of four and a half stars that was available on the market. Been a little bit of time since then, since we last checked in a week or two on that part. Has that disappeared? Because if it has... I don't see four other teams, but how close everything is, how tightly compacted everything is, you could easily see a team doing what Hanok has done, but most teams are nowhere near as young as we are. That makes a big difference on the rate of leveling up. Well, our five-star guy is still there, Alex Hart still available nobody assigned him yet that could still be a difference maker for one team one team and it would have to be in that market pretty close behind us so the odds of that pretty minimal and then there's only three only three four and a half star riders we have three five star riders the chances of any of them making enough of a difference to a team even if they're replacing the third rider we're, we're talking about a minute difference. So there are four riders with the smallest of chance to boost a team. Most of them would not come in as a top three riders for any of the teams where it matters. They'd be the fourth or fifth or sixth best guy. So the odds are incredibly small. I'd say a one to two percent chance, maybe a five percent chance on a stretch that one of those four riders would get signed on one of those teams that's within about five spots of us and would boost them. 5% chance. We'll round up. 5% chance that that happens. The greater likelihood is what happened with us regarding Hanok because we'd already seen it. We were above the bubble and it was not through signings. Two teams overtook us through the very same method that Hanok has now done the same for us feeling pretty confident now especially with how short of a time period is left that we've gotten the boost and we've got another year coming without a u23s team or even enough talent to populate a u23s team that's going to do any good other than spend a big sum of money it's still hit and miss on what to do but if we're only picking up one quality rider a year there's only one out there that's not enough for a U23 team. So for now, I'm going to stay away from that. But I will continue to pick up the best young talent when it does come along. And one of our 18-year-olds, one of our new-gen faces, uh, 
we finally got to the end of his ranking potentials and looks like a pretty dang decent climber this is somebody who can hit about an 80 uh, eventually so we'll go ahead and sign him up it's an easy minimum contract and so we are adding one more to the roster for the coming year two weeks later we're about to hit il lombardia three of those four riders are still available on the market but our position is unchanged it's too late to change now i mean there's uh, a week tops left on on the transfer market before everything's set we're not going to drop four places in in one week we could drop one sure but there's no way we're going to drop four places uh huge sigh of relief hen oak perfectly timed uh is our savior it's the final monument of the year we're at il lombardia we've brought the strongest team our our seven strongest climbers are all here all present matoni still not a hundred percent after the back-to-back -back grand tours left him you know really tired really fatigued he's a little fatigued he ended up with a minus one and he's the weak link today. He's the only decision as a domestique. After that, everyone has a positive race day balance because I was able to get four of these riders, I think, on objectives for this race. Only one of them is actually on a fitness peak. They've all missed that miserably. A Shimwe is one of the ones with an objective. A Shimwe's fitness peak ended a couple days ago. Ended. Those guys lucking out, but while we descend here, he doesn't get as much recovery in, so it does hurt him personally, but he's our weakest domestique of the day. And that gave us, before we go into the hardest climb of the day, water taken care of 54k to go uh, we also need to make sure that we are holding onto our position a little bit so we're gonna get right up to that 85 territory and Tony I don't know why you decided to drop back after doing the water uh, or why Arab is hanging back so far but I don't think that's a big deal right now just gotta get through the climb uh, the breakaway had a nice healthy advantage but it's decimated down to just three riders at the front now and down to just a slender two and a half minutes. So breakaway is not a threat today. Uh, in fact, the other two have already been caught, but we're getting an acceleration group here. I'm assuming that there's going to be some key guys attacking, like Rodriguez and Martinez and Higuita. But with 50k to go and almost the entire peloton, I don't see them succeeding at all in getting away right now. The big acceleration, the big hard push is going to break up the uh, the peloton quite a bit. Oh, 19 riders though, that's a little too much. Peloton has been decimated and we've now got a group of 24 that are chasing down those 19, but it's already been pulled back by 20 seconds from what it was. We lost Matoni, so Arab needs protection, and that's going to be Samuels is the next guy. Mohira lost for a moment, is back in play. Uh, 50 seconds, got to get covered, but there's too much flat. There's too much opportunity. There's uh, supposedly, probably, not quite enough firepower in those 19 to do something, but we've got to make sure that there is actually a chase happening. And the four that are at the front aren't riding particularly hard right now. I think we need to commit to the chase. Nope, nope, they are. Okay. And with 59, there's nowhere near as many riders left for other teams. So we're in a good position right now. And those front three are nearly caught. I think I might go into play a little bit earlier on this one than I normally would because of the numbers advantage that I have. We've caught the front guys. There's an acceleration. Yes, uh, we are gonna make a play earlier. Arab. Samuels is the best bet we have of a sprint at the end. He's the best bet for a sprint at the end. 
So even though some of these other guys might have slightly better ratings than him, uh, Arab and, and Samuels are the quick guys. So we're going to put them at the tail end of this thing. Down to 50 riders. Mohira has dropped. Bardet is dropped. Simmons is about to drop. And Hanope is done. On to Isaacs. Isaacs at least is a little bit punchy. But right now, this is more about devastation in the group than it is trying to be the one to devastate the group. Keeping these guys essentially in play. I kind of could just go right back to protection mode, but uh, we're already set up for what's to come. Samuels is going to drop fade a little bit. Could be a lot. Could be a lot, but if we end up with a group of 10 or something heading into the final climb and I've got three guys, I will gladly see separation. And there was separation, but Klogue just enough of a guy in the gap it stayed together it's 29 samuels is recovering a little bit he might be in play for the end otherwise arab's going to be the leader right now we'll assume that arab is the leader and if samuels is there at the end then hooray but isaac's keeping the pressure on keeping the tempo high let's get a shimway ready 10k to go some riders caught up apparently and made contact but here is the the move. These are individuals going for it at this point. And already at their limit. And now Isaac's going to his limit, but the others, at least a Shimwe and an Arab, are very much in play. There's the next wave, and here we go. This is a Shimwe. This is where we try to destroy the group and attack over the top. Uh, a Shimwe has a little separation, but here comes Arab. Isaacs, Samuels, nothing left. Isaacs try to get in the line there. Shimwe is already leading out Arab at this point. Gel, it's a little late for that. I think I should have done it a little earlier. 2K, good descent. Inside the final kilometer. Now Arab going for it. We're not going to win this sprint. There's only a couple guys to challenge us. But Arab might be able to hang on for a podium. Red bar is gone. A podium is going to be a very good result. Glog, Hagita, Sammy Arab in third. Ahead of Pagacher. Ahead of Sheffield, Ciccone, Ucha Brooks, Gregoire, Fortunato. Uh, sprint anything. Everything we have left. Oh. Shimway's last one. Still looking across the line. Uh, Samuels was 15th, Isaacs was 12th, uh, Shimwe was 18th, so it's a very good team result on this one. And here comes Hanok now on his way to the finish, 1.7, trying to close in, see if we can improve his position a little bit. Top 20 is already gone, so I'm not sure what sort of points might be left, but if he can crack the top 30, 35-ish, no, it's 44th, okay. A little too far down for him, but that's four riders in the top 18, including a podium spot. Until we can get somebody who has that medium mountain slash punch being really strong and also being a strong sprinter, I don't see us winning too many of these races. So all, all in all, that's a strong result. In the last race of the year, this is the last punchy stage that we're going to see this year. Tour of Guangxi, it's the lowest level you get for World Tour uh, races. So it's worth a lot less points than some of the other ones. But we had slipped out of the top five in the wrap-up races of the season. Even though after La Vuelta we were still fifth, but there was a team 100 points behind. So... They had temporarily bumped ahead of us. Now, I've not looked again since Il Lombardia. We might have jumped back into the top five, that podium, and multiple guys around. Good amount of points there. But I don't want to waste this opportunity. Last punchy stage. And Tour of Guangxi, even though it's a week long, it's all sprint stages. And then you've got one 5.8-kilometer climb at the end of this stage that 
is enough that nearly all, if not all, of the sprinters will get eliminated, meaning this one stage can def decide the GC for this race. It's not a guarantee, though. It's a very weak field compared to most fields, but it's not a nothing field. There's two to three riders that have about a 77, 78 hills rating. Musa has an 80 for us, so he's a very incomplete rider. But there are three riders with an 80 plus mountain rating at this one. So Samuels and our, our draw did not end up being a good one. I actually did have a couple of riders pick this as their end of season uh, objective because there was nothing else around the end of the season, late season, for them to have something. So I was like, might as well, might as well. I knew that there was, you know, an opportunity at this race. But the expected draw was a plus two. The actual draw ended up being a minus seven. So we have a minus nine net draw. The weather could have been a factor in that. But I, either way, that part didn't do us any favors. Um, Samuels is the guy. Musa is uh, a good opportunity kind of guy to really put the foot down. But he has no medium mountain means he won't last till the later part of this climb so we will have to use him ahead and de villiers was supposed to be that guy in between but he's got a terrible draw absolutely horrendous draw um so the support for samuels isn't great and samuels isn't looking great and those three guys with that 80 plus mountain eh, at this point they're probably the favorites but if we can crack even just one of them we can get samuels likely into a podium spot so we'll go for it. We'll see what we can do here. It should be worth a decent amount of points. And if the field does get all sorts of split up, I mean, we're looking at least at a top four or five type position with this one. With 10K to go and a couple high-rated flat guys or sprint kind of guys, we're going to use them here to get us out front, force the issue. Let's control this one. Let, let's see what happens. We've... It's been such a rarity for us to be in this position since reaching that Continental Pro level and starting to race the World Tour calendar. We are constantly the underdog, and technically we are today, but the other teams are much weaker than what we've gotten used to facing off against. And as we approach the climb, Maccabee, I, like, he's the only guy we've even had to use, and we easily got to the front, so Kareem is going to move and start taking over. and put the other teams under pressure and we want to use these guys to uh, get us going Kareem punchy enough to already put some pressure on 4.3k to go we want to start gelling up for these guys one by one okay before I go any further let's micromanage for a moment Samuels is in position and nobody is coming over the top we're at 3.k where Samuels is red bars getting used up a little bit on this one though but we're definitely aiming for the let's see some pressure type scenario uh, but none of the guys have been able to tail off and uh, assist with the let's put them under pressure thing do we want to it's 3k this is going to allow some of the guys to kind of come back at us because this is a little lift in tempo they had something to sprint with I would totally sprint at this point 2.5k last gel uh, let's go a little bit longer a little longer a little longer here okay now now you've got some guys trying to come up so on to uh, De Villiers 2.2k not as punchy as he normally is 1.7 he definitely brought us forward brought us back ahead of that first wave of guys who tried to come on strong augustine not a big threat dwyer there's one of the punchiest guys we definitely got to watch out for him right now kemp there's the strong man it's an 81 mountain and actually he's only second favorite i believe just a minute that's one of the best punchers in position uh diverseness that's that's the third guy that's got that that sort of rating uh Mahorich is kind of the fourth one on that and nobody else is well positioned enough so we're looking at one of those strong mountain guys and three punchy guys in position to challenge we're at 1.8k 
I, it would be nice if we could sprint from here, but we can't. Uh, I still want to save a little something for uh, for Samuels. So let's see what we've got coming here over the next little bit, little bit. Nobody's making a big move here, and at 1.3k, now we can start our move for Musa. Musa, get out of the wheel. Uh, you're a strong 95. So give me that. Okay, and then this is now Sprint, and this is now Samuels. Uh, Samuels, I don't want to sprint. I want everyone else to sprint, though. So let's tell everyone else to sprint. Samuels, come out of the wheel, and now 800 meters. Like I said, we're trying to just get into the podium position if we can. Augustine is gone. Uh, Samuels is looking at a top three right now, but we've got a couple guys that are kind of come through. And just as I predicted, looks like we're headed for fourth place. Augustine takes the win. Or has Samuels snatched third? Dwyer gets second. Samuels does get third ahead of Kemp, ahead of the strongest mountain guy. Uh, that's good. That's good. And there's a gap right there. So 26 seconds. These guys are all losing time. De Villiers is there, so he's going to have a good position. Musa is there. He's going to have a good position, but there's a gap. Now, are there are, are there further gaps? So it's a punchy stage. So what's all going to be given? That first one outside of the top seven should be. This, it's all tightly compact. Most everybody's going to end up getting same time, but losing roughly 28 to 30 seconds. Augustine gets separation. He's definitely going to move into the race lead, but Samuel's there, seven seconds down, 25. 25 to the Chasers, and the Chasers is virtually everyone. Four-second bonus for taking third, plus 18-second separation, so 22. Uh, the top sprinters were at 14 ahead. That is going to be enough to move into, theoretically, third place here. Fourth. Really? Von Tricht? Did not have that much of an advantage, but he was here. <laughs> he didn't get the separation. Holy cow, good on him. Nicely done. Wow, sir, that was amazing. Well, okay, fourth overall is going to be solid points. Now there's going to be sprinters around that can still gain in the final couple of stages, but we're definitely headed for a, a top 10 in this one, so decent points. Not bad for uh, playing just one quick stage. Final standings is Samuels down to fifth as early leader Sindre Samuelson uh, has claimed some additional stages, has not overtaken Augustine. Augustine has done enough. That's somebody who clearly had a tremendous race day condition bonus and has worked out for him, uh, worked out quite well for him. But Samuels gets fifth overall and Maccabee is 30th. So it's really just Samuels getting us some points. Not the biggest haul, but that's okay. That's the final race of the year done, and we're still in that 33rd. So we are going to hang on to Continental Pro, and we've got another year coming. Well, we have dropped one spot. We're down to 34th. Somebody else had to level up in one of the other teams, or maybe sign one of those guys. Either way, though, we're still above the bubble. Barely. We are okay. We are going to make it. There's, uh, I think it's closing in one day, two days, something like that. So... Safety. Did climb back above Telephone into fifth place as well, and Sammy Arab actually moved up his position further. He is eighth with that third place at Il Lombardia, so he is eighth in the individual rankings. That has got to be, got to be a guaranteed promotion for Morocco and their two or three training points that they have right now, or training level that they have. It's got to be. So that's good. That's fantastic news on that part, though we'll see January 1st if that's actually the case. In terms of those nation rankings, we're all over that top 20 with Morocco the highest this year. 5,000 points, 16th. Uh, South Africa and Eritrea, 17th and 18th. Right behind it with Rwanda, 21st. Avenipol ahead of Pogacar and Almeida as the top three in those individual rankings this year. And Sami Arab got... Almost 700 points at the Tour de France. Giro got 663. La Vuelta got 563. Very similar position between Tour de France and La Vuelta, but Tour de France has the highest point value, the highest point get of any race of the year. Focusing on that one, 
well, we did earn more points than we did at La Vuelta, but we would have been in a higher position had we focused more on La Vuelta. I think it would have offset the points a bit. They probably would have flipped, actually, really, if we hadn't, if we'd switched that focus more on La Vuelta, less on the Tour. Tour would have been a little bit lower score, but even with Quick Sim, he still could have done something semi decent. Uh, the Quick Sim does not take in a, into account the difficulty level that we play at, so those plus fours aren't incorporated. So now you just have a guy who's a 79 mountain and a 77 time trial or whatever it is uh, on his own as team leader. He might crack that top 10 anyway. It would have been more like 10th place, maybe 12th as our team leader, right? Team leader being a factor in that one, even though there's more than 20 guys who are better climbers than him. But if he's going for it and he's got some decent climbers around him, AI is going to simulate that out and he's going to get some results. And maybe he's 12th, right? Less points, definitely less points. The La Vuelta part, just playing those stages alone, even with the team we brought, playing those punchy stages, he lost a minute and a half to two minutes there. We wouldn't have lost that minute and a half to two minutes. In fact, we might have even put other teams under more pressure and gained time. We certainly wouldn't have lost time. That alone would have bumped us up to that sixth place. But how much higher? Well, ah, we don't know. We don't know. You can always speculate. But with 34th, we're safe. We're secure. We've got another year coming. The big test, though, is what to do with that year. Do we truly speed things up and try to squeeze in a couple more years do we make it another year we don't know is it about trying to build that database and find that rider find that six star prospect finally we'll never see him reach that six stars in this playthrough but can we finally have because right now even though we already boosted a lot of nations this year there was nothing there was, we signed the only decent rider there, there could have been more there might have been more there was certainly more riders in the pool this year, which was why our scouting couldn't really get through much of it. There was a lot of unknowns in that group, and we'll see at least in the search results for the coming year, but I'm kind of curious about the long term. We've already seen what this team can do when we give it our all. Fifth, that's how good they are. Now, how close are we to La Gruppetto? Close enough that, like, if we didn't speed through as much this year, I probably could have had us to fourth, but oh, one more spot. Like, that's not that big of a difference. Same with the La Vuelta. We were seventh. Ooh, sixth. Like, so what? <laughs> so what? We've proven that we can win stages at a Grand Tour. We've proven that we can score top tens. If we give it everything we've got, we bring the best riders to the Giro and La Vuelta and pull the focus back away from La Tour where it's too strong of a field I would think we can maybe crack the top five maybe just maybe but again time effort how much has to go into that to squeeze out that one or two more places squeeze out that few more points it's not going to make that much difference here we are a team barely on the bubble for Continental Pro and yet we are strongly competitive at world tour level but we're surrounded by six star guys like there's only so much push we can get now if we quick sim we are not going to be anywhere near fifth next year like quick sim a lot only race a little it's going to drop us down it'll drop us down to 11 12k but gives us an inch, a chance to see something different is that what you want to see we've gone slow right now we've sped it up a little what we haven't done yet is really speed it up. And I'm kind of curious to see what we can get out of this database. So right now I'm leaning towards really speeding up this next season. But that is going to do it for this season. I'm the Kathlon Gamer. We have survived. We have kept it going for at least another year. Three five-star guys may not be enough long-term to keep us in Continental Pro because that bubble gets higher and higher and higher and higher every season. We almost drowned this year. We may drown next year, but I'm still curious to see what happens. I'm the Cathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.